Hey everyone, Gabriel here, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about how you can turn a dropshipping store into a private label brand. So if you already have a one product dropshipping store that's doing really well, or you have a niche store and you have some products that are extremely successful and you want to private label them to take things to the next level and start building a real brand, then this is the perfect video for you. I'm going to be showing you two different methods that you can use to do this. So without further ado, let's get right into the content. All right, so first off, I want to show you an example of what your end goal could be with private labeling a one product dropshipping store. So this brand right here is called blendjet.com, and this is a great example. Now, I don't think these guys ever did any dropshipping just based on how, how well everything was executed. This was probably a team of experts that, you know, started this as an e-commerce brand right from the start. However, this is something that you could have started dropshipping and then eventually transitioned to a private label brand. And so that's why I'm going to use it as an example because it's a really good example. And so they sell these USB blenders. Now this USB blender is on AliExpress. And I'm not sure this is the exact one, but there's a bunch of variations and essentially it's, it's this USB blender from AliExpress. So what they could have done and what you could have done is you could have started a brand called, let's say Blend Pro. So you start Blend Pro and you create a one product brand around this product and you know, you can brand your website, you can have a nice Blend Pro logo, you can have make everything branded. The only thing is that your product wouldn't be branded. And, you know, that's not the end of the world. As long as people still understand that it's a USB blender, as just because it doesn't have your logo on it, that's not a complete deal breaker, right? Obviously, it's better to have your logo on it, and that's why you eventually want to transition to private labeling. But it's not necessary to start off. So you could start off just drop shipping and then having a completely branded website and then just this um, non-branded product. And then once you get to the point where you have consistent orders and you start scaling your brand a little bit, that's when you can consider, you know, actually getting your logo put on the product to increase your branding, to make it look more trustworthy and to really start taking things to the next level. And that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. All right. So I want to quickly touch on the pros and cons of private labeling. So number one is that it's great for branding and it gives you a higher perceived value, right? Um, it's obvious that it's great for branding. You know, having your logo definitely solidifies your brand, but it definitely gives you a higher perceived value. So if everyone's selling, you know, what what has a higher perceived value to you? That product from AliExpress I just showed you, that USB blender, or the one from Blendjet with the Blendjet logo on it? Even though it's probably a very, very similar product, the one from Blendjet seems like it's worth a lot more and it has a much higher perceived value because they built this great brand around it and they have their logo on it. And so that's one of the main pros of private labeling your products. Now, another one is that it's better for influencer marketing. If you just have generic products right out of China without any branding, you're going to have a really hard time finding personal influencers that want to share your product with their followers, right? Because personal influencers really care about their followers. It's an audience that they built over a long period of time. They worked hard to build an audience. And so they're not just going to promote any product, you know, that any product that presents itself. They want to, pro they want to promote products that they really relate to and that they like the brand. And so if you have a, re a really nice brand and you have your logos on the product, if you have your logo on the product, then you're much more likely to find personal influencers who are willing to work with you. And Blendjet is a great example of this. They did a massive influencer campaign with Jen Selter, and Jen Selter is a very famous gym influencer. And so by partnering up with an influencer like that, they were able to take their brand to the next level. And, you know, they use Jen Selter and a bunch of marketing assets now. And so that wouldn't have not been possible if they were just drop shipping the USB blender from China. Now, another pro is long term brand building. Um, if you want, if you want to build a long-term brand, it's kind of essential that you know you private label your products or have your logo on it or make your own custom products. It's really hard to build a long-term brand just drop shipping, and because everyone has the same products, everyone has access to the same products, and so there's really no unique value proposition to your brand if you just have you know regular the same products as everyone else. And so private labeling your products is great for long-term brand building. Now another pro is that it's harder to copy. And this is for sure, you know, this is a real, this is a real thing. If you have your logo on the product, it's much harder to copy because you can make ads showing off that logo. So, you know, you could purposely record it. And so that the logo is always in the frame. And then the, you could ask the models to always show the logo, you know, show it off. And so that even if people copy your ads, the logo is still going to be so visible that people are going to know that this, the original ad was from, you know, that brand. And so they're just going to go to that brand anyways, when they see that the website that was advertising it isn't actually that brand. And so it's much harder to copy a private label because, you know, you have the logo on the products. And so all your marketing assets are branded. And so I want to show you this. This is a screenshot that I took from about two weeks ago. And this is a split test that I was running with one of my private label brands. 
And so this is a new brand that I'm working on. This is the main thing that I'm working on at the moment. And I was split testing the two. So I had a new product that had that was private labeled. So it had my logo on it and it had a custom product page with, you know, photos of the private labeled product. And then I had the old product page, which is just the regular product from AliExpress and, you know, no logo on the product. And I ran a split test. So with the same traffic from Facebook and I was split testing the traffic and I saw I wanted to see which one converted better. And, you know, I was expecting the new product to convert better, obviously. And it did. And so these were the stats. The new product converted at 9.2% and the old product converted at 7%. And so I was able to get a conversion rate 2.2% better by private labeling the product. And this is what I'm talking about with increased perceived value, right? Since I have my logo on it and I have a real brand, people are more interested in buying. There's a higher perceived value. And so I can either um, charge the same price and then I'll get a higher conversion rate like in this case or I could raise the price and maintain the same conversion rate as before I private labeled the product. And so that's one of the main advantages of private labeling. You can charge more or you'll get a better conversion rate, which will definitely help you scale your brand further. All right, so now onto the cons. Number one is that you can't dropship anymore. You need a fulfillment center. And so this is annoying because dropshipping is easy. There's no upfront risk. With private label, there is some upfront risk, unlike dropshipping, because you need to buy in bulk to meet the minimum order quantity and then you need to send it to a fulfillment center. And so the MOQ, which means minimum order quantity, the MOQ is usually anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 pieces. And so you do need to order in bulk in order to private label. And so, you know, if you have a product that's doing really well right now and everything's going great, and so you tell yourself that you're gonna private label to take things to the next level, and so you start the private labeling process, you order like 5,000 pieces, and then all of a sudden your product dies off and you can't get it to go off again then you're gonna be stuck with that inventory and you just lost a lot of money. So there is upfront risk with private labeling and that's one thing that you need to understand. However, it can also pay off like I showed you guys with the con with the pros. Now, another con is that you need to manage stock levels. Now, this is really not that big of a deal. You just need to once in a while check how much stock you have and then reorder based on that and based on your projections of how much you're gonna be selling in the future. All right, so now I wanna talk about the easy way to transition from a dropshipping store to a private label brand. And this is the easiest way that I know of, and this is what I did for my new brand that I was talking about earlier in the video. So this is for people who are already working with an agent for dropshipping. And so you're already working with that agent, he's already shipping out your orders for the product that you wanna private label. And so you can just ask, you can say, hey, I wanna private label this product, can you help me out? And what they can do is they can negotiate with manufacturers, they can source the best manufacturer to private label your, the product, and then they can negotiate and you know agree to terms on price and minimum order quantity and then they can buy the stock and store it for you the same way that they were already doing you know drop shipping agents or sourcing agents whatever you want to call them that's what they already do they buy the products in bulk for you and then they store it and then they ship your orders and so they're you know it's the exact same thing the only difference is that they need to buy in larger quantities and they they need to negotiate with the manufacturer a little bit to get it private labeled and so the only difference the only change that I had to make, you know, I was already shipping out all my orders with this agent. I was already working with them. The only change that I had to make is I had to buy a little bit more stock up front to meet the minimum order quantity. In my case, it was a minimum order quantity of like 10,000, but the product was really cheap. And so it wasn't that big of a deal. And so I had to buy, you know, so I bought a lot of stock and I got my logo on the product. And all I had to do was talk to my, talk to my agent and then send him pictures of what I want the product to look like and then send him the design files and he negotiated with the manufacturer and he, he bought the stock for me and he stored it in his warehouse. And so, you know, for me, I didn't have to do anything different. All I had to do was pay a little bit more upfront just so he could buy the stock. So this is the easiest way by far to private label, right? Uh, you don't have to change anything. You can continue shipping out of China and, you know, you can get the cheap shipping costs out of China and everything's really easy. Now, the downside is that, you know, the fact that you're still shipping out of China is like a blessing and a curse at the same time because it's a blessing because you can ship you can ship internationally at a really cheap cost but it's a curse because you know it takes a while to get to like the united states things like that and you can get a lot of customer complaints but you know you can still get some faster shipping methods out of china with an agent so it's not that bad now the harder way to transition is to use a u.s based fulfillment center like shipbob and now i've done this for one of my other brands beauty charcoal this was one of my first brands and this is what I did. So I used a US-based fulfillment center like ShipBob, and then I ordered in bulk from Alibaba, and I handled all the negotiations and the private labeling myself. 
And so essentially all you have to do is go on Alibaba and then search for your product name and then add the keyword private label or OEM or something like that. Um, and then, you know, find a supplier that can, that can private label the product for you. And usually there's a ton. It's not hard. To, it's not difficult to find. And then you need to order in bulk. And so you can do the whole payment. You can do everything through Alibaba. You know, you can talk to your suppliers, send them the design files, um, you know, work on the packaging over um, Alibaba. And then you can pay with Alibaba trade insurance, which is, you know, very safe. So you're not going to get scammed or anything like that. It's super safe. And then they can send the inventory to your fulfillment center in the US. And so if you're going to use a US based fulfillment center, I would recommend ShipBob. I had no problems with them when I was doing Beauty Charcoal. And so that's a great way to do it. Now, there are some downsides to this. Number one is that you're subject to US customs, and this can be complicated for FDA regulated products. Now, this is a problem that I had with Beauty Charcoal. Quite a few times, my shipments got stopped by the FDA. Even though my product was FDA approved, it was really difficult to you know, get everything handled because I'm not a US resident. And so I had to keep you know, calling back and forth with the FDA, filling out a bunch of forms, which was really annoying. And now, since there's a trade war going on between the US and China, this is probably even more intensely regulated. And so, you know, if you have like health related products, it's, it can be very difficult to get them into the United States and customs will give you a hard time. And, you know, there's a lot of fees and all types of tariffs now. And so, you know, U.S. customs can be complicated. And that's why shipping out of China can be a really easy solution. Now, another problem with this is that it's more expensive for shipping and, you know, it's more expensive for shipping, especially internationally. So when you're shipping out of the U.S., shipping out internationally is going to be expensive. It's going to be at least eight or nine dollars and it's it takes more time. And so, you know, it doesn't take more time, but it takes like the same amount of time. Like, let's say you're shipping out to like Europe from um, from the U.S. It would honestly take the same amount of time as in shipping from China to Europe. That would take the same amount of time. And so, you know, you need to you need to decide based on what your main target market is, where you want to base your fulfillment center. And you can also split them across. Right. You could do a mix of ship Bob and then a mix of using an agent. Um, so use ship Bob for U.S. orders and then an agent for international orders. That's another great way to do it. Now, um, you know, so more expensive for shipping, but it's also much faster domestically, right? So that's a big pro of using something like ShipBob is that you can ship your products within the U.S. in like under a week and sometimes as fast as like two day delivery. And so that definitely helps for long term brand building. So just going back to the BlendJet example. So I just looked up on Alibaba. I looked up USB Blender private label. And so the first couple of ones aren't what I'm looking for. Um, this is pretty similar but this isn't the one we're looking for. So there's a few alternatives, right? So you could also, one great thing about buying in bulk is that you have more options than just AliExpress. So that's another opportunity to differentiate yourself if you wanna build a real, a real brand. You could find a slightly different product, but I'm gonna to try to find the exact same one. And so I think this is it. Um, I think this is the exact same one and so is this. Um, so yeah, these are both great options. And so you could take this one. I think this one has a higher transaction level. So yeah, I would look at the transaction level. So this one has a transaction level of 360,000. This one only 50,000. And this one has a better response rate and a better rating. And so you would definitely want to go with this one. And it's also a verified supplier. And so that's, that's a great, that's a great sign. And so you could click on here and then you know, as you can see, um, they should probably say something about customization. So let's see if I can find it. Um, so they just show you some pictures about it. And so, I mean, I'm pretty sure this is literally the exact same product as as BlendJet. Like the, the blades look the same. Um, this looks the same. Everything looks the same. And then, you know, let's see if they say anything about customization. Yeah, so right here, actually. So it says customization, customized logo. So as long as you order 42 cartons. So, you know, they do have a quite a large minimum order quantity for customization because, you know, 10 cartons is $3,000. And so you, you do need to order a lot of stock for a customized logo. But, you know, it's, it's doable. And so you could do this and you could get a private labeled product and then just send it out in bulk to a fulfillment center, either in the US or in China or wherever you want to put your fulfillment center, you could really do it anywhere. And that's the general idea. So that's how you can transition from a drop shipping store to a private label brand. Now, one more thing I want to show you about this is a great website that you can use to get your logo and your packaging and everything, all your design work done. Now, I'm not like sponsored by them or anything, but I really, I really like this website. I think it's the absolute best bang for your buck that you can get in terms of packaging design and logo design. So it's a little pricey, but you know, I'm assuming that if you're going into starting a private label, 
you do have a little bit of budget to spend, which you should. If you don't, you probably shouldn't be starting a private label. And so this website is called 99designs. And it's a really great design website. So how it works is that you can create, it works by design contest. And so you can create a contest. And so I'm showing you an example. This is from when I was designing the, the packaging for the charcoal powder. So I wanted to design the label for my charcoal powder. Now this is a really simple design, but um, I wanted it to be done properly. And so I used um, 99 designs. And so how it works is you create a contest. So this is a bronze package. So it's, um, it's, I think it's like $400 or something like that. And so how it works is you pay $400 and that becomes the prize money for the contest. And then now you get all these really good designers compete over, you know, which they want to win your $400 by creating the best design. And so the result is that you get hundreds of designs to choose from and you can, you know, you're bound to find one that you like. And so you pay one price, but you get tons of different designs and then you can keep iterating them. You can keep working with the designers to get to a final product that you like. And so that's what I did for Beauty Charcoal. Um, you know, these were the, the finalist designs, I think. Um, so this is the one that I went with. But then, you know, if I go back to the ones that I declined, I had so many options, right? These were all um, different designs that I could have used for Beauty Charcoal. Like there's a bunch of different ones, um, you know, like a ton of different designs. And so that's why I really like 99 designs. You can just you pay one price and then you get all these different options and you can find something that really suits your brand. And so you can, you can do all types of design work for, um, on this website, you can do packaging, you can do, um, you know, you can do logos, you can do brand identity, you can do anything you could imagine. And so really great website for getting all your, you know, your private label design needs. And, you know, you definitely want to get good design before you private label, because like I said, there's a, there's a large minimum order quantity. And so you don't want to like brush the logo because you're going to have a lot of products with that logo to sell. And so you want to do it once and do it right. And so I would definitely recommend 99 designs. All right, everyone. So that was my take on how to turn a drop shipping store into a private label brand. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope it was useful. Now I have a quick announcement to make. So I've been working on a course slash case study hybrid where I show you exactly how I started a new store in July 2018 and scaled it to over a million dollars in sales by December 2018. And so I show you exactly, you know, I reveal the store and I show you exactly how I ran the ads, how I made the ads, how I scaled them, how I ran the operations, how I managed the fulfillment, how I set up the customer service. I show you everything about the store in a real case study slash course hybrid. And so this is it's going to be a great opportunity for you guys to see all the theory that I teach on my channel in practice. And I'm really excited to release that and I'm going to be releasing that on February 7th. And so this is going to be paid content because I'm revealing one of my stores. I'm putting a lot of work into it. And so I think it's only fair that I charge for this content. And so yeah, that's going to be dropping February 7th. And if you want to be the first to hear about it and get an exclusive discount when it does launch, make sure to join the waitlist for that. So I'm going to have a link in the description. It's probably going to be the first or second link and you can sign up with your email there and there's going to be, you know, you're going to be a part of the waitlist when I launch the course and you're going to receive an exclusive discount. And so that was the announcement. And on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.